Yo, Kenny, how's it going, brother? Good, good, man. Long time no chat. Uh, thank you so much for being on under uh, total different circumstances. I reached out to you a couple of days ago, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you was on board. So, uh, And you said you wanted to come back because you got a lot going on with you. Uh, yeah. So congratulations on the album, The Mood. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, and I just played the, the song uh, Signals earlier. Um, nice. <laughs> definitely, definitely enjoyed that joint. Um, so before we get into this album, you was once known as Jay Jeffrey. Now you call Dante. Now, um, what made you rebranded yourself, change the name, and everything? Uh, reason I rebranded because I felt like started branching out with my music more. I started getting way more creative. So. I feel like they had the name I had when I first started rapping a lot, but then when I started singing and doing some pop and R&B songs, I was like, man, I should just go by my original name, which is Dante. So um, I decided to go by that now because I feel like it's unique. No one has it, you know, and a lot of people use the name that day, so I didn't want to, you know, confuse any new listeners or something, you know, so I decided to go with my name. So with this album, The Mood, which just came out uh, digitally. Um, what was the whole process of working on this project, and what made you name it The Mood? Well, the reason I named it The Mood was uh, because basically with this whole project, Kenny, I was trying to target the female's ear. So I like the best way to do it was give it some top of music, and the whole tape was focused on sorts of relationships not just the heartbreak, not just the great times, but everything, the sad times and the times. So um, I got to in the mood because I felt like it fit every single mood that you can go through. And, you know, the sad, the happy, the trials, the tribulations. And when an album has all that, you know, you can't, you can't enclose it. So the mood is important to me, you know? I definitely uh, got a chance to hear a couple of songs. Uh, Signals, that's definitely fire right there. Um, <laughs> definitely um, a, a very radio-friendly track right there. Um, definitely one of those songs you can nod your head to. Uh, so talk about that uh, song in particular and, and what made you decide for it to be a single off the mood. Uh, Dante, are you there? Oh, I think I just lost him. I think I just lost him. Hold on, let me get him back on here. Uh, Dante, uh, it's back. We just had a little, little hiccup. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as I was, as I was saying, um, talk about the song uh, "Signals" and what made you decide for that to be a uh, single. Yeah, so the signals, it had to be the single, you know, because I got my brother Kane on there, and it was just a dope beat. The production was uh, from a friend in Germany. He's really dope, Daniel on the track. So um, once we had the mixture and it was all good vibes and stuff, Daniel sent me the beat. Me and Kane went into the studio the same day, and it was just like magic. I was like, wow, this could really be something. And it was at a point where I had about like half the album done, and I knew like six songs in. This was a, this was a single. I gotta put it first. This is the intro, and it kind of helped me make the rest of the, the album. You know what I mean? So that that just had to be the one. It was super fan friendly. The video was dope, fun. We had a dope idea for the beginning, so I just ran with it. Uh, for those who just tuning in, this is chilling with Jeff McKinney C on TMV Cafe. I'm joined with the artist formerly known as Jay Jeffrey, now go by the name of Dante. New record entitled The Mood. Available digitally, all over the so all over the internet, all over the big yes. names, uh, SoundCloud, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, uh, everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> literally. So, um, as far as you and you know the direction that you're going, what has been the reaction that you've been getting from your Jay Jeffrey fans? Uh, since this transition that you've gone through and the new fans that have got a chance to listen to your recent uh, music, what has been the
the reception you've been getting um, since this whole transition? Yeah, transition was crazy. When I mean, like, as soon as I changed my, like, Instagram name, i seen so many people like, what's going on? Who's this Dante? Because I literally, everyone, like, in my hometown and in the city where I'm at, in New York City, everywhere I go, they knew me as Hefe. Yo, that's Hefe. The guy right there with the nice hair, that's Hefe. So everyone called me Jay Hefe out here. And then I was like, man, everyone's calling me Hefe. But they're like, yo, who's this Dante guy? Who's this Dante guy with your song? You know, and I'm just like, nah, man, that's still me. I'm still the same. My new fans are awesome that just are coming along. They love the whole scheme of things. And when people call me Hefe around new people, they're like, wait, who's Hefe? Oh, you mean Dante. So the, the two usually connect. But um, the reception, I would say, is definitely good. It wasn't bad. It was more surprise than anything because everyone thought Hefe was a cool name. But it was definitely good reception. So I've been retweeting your music. Um, you know, yeah. I, 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 I tend to do that at times uh and like i was like wait a minute this guy is he does look familiar i i I, (laughs) and then i went i went i went to your twitter profile and it says jay jeffrey and i'm like oh he name changed okay yeah so so i was like okay i i recognize the dude now so um, yes so you know that Anytime you go through a name change, you know it's, you know things like that can happen. People wonder where Jay go. He stop music. Name exactly. Change? You know, but you know it is what it is. You know, you know it's, it is what it is. So and, um, the, it was just more of a growth thing for me too. You know, absolutely growth. Um, you know, people, you know, feel the need. Like people may like what they're doing at first, but there's always more that you know that you can look into so um, exactly so congrats on this project congrats thank on, you congrats on everything uh the mood by the homie dante available digitally right now and since this is the first time i'm interviewing you under your name change and for people that still kind of like still looking for you if you will i want you to go ahead pro, uh, promote your social media feeds and and where people can hear your your music including the mood perfect so whoever's listening right now if you want to check out my dope song signals that my boy kenny just played you can go check it out everywhere all social networks is at dante peak it's d-o-n-t-a-e-s peak p-e-a-k and you can even go check out my website dante's peak.com d-o-n-t-a-e P E A K S and um check me out everywhere. The mood's available everywhere, man. Um Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, iTunes, anything you guys want, man. So go check it out. Just type in Don Tate Mood once again that's D O N T A E. And that's that's all you guys got, man. Come hit me up. So there you have it. Go get go go cop the album. Um The Mood. Now obviously I asked an artist this question last week, and I'll ask you this as well as an artist, independent artist. So Target and Best Buy are planning on removing CDs from their stores. Yeah, I heard Uh, that. From Best Buy in particular, that will be in effect in July. Um, Yeah. Target, Mm -hmm. I guess a little bit later, um, I mean, what was your reaction when you heard that news do you think, I mean, obviously CDs have, sales have declined. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I gave out, I, I gave out this stat, uh, in the year 2000, 800 million CDs were sold. 800. 2000, mm-hmm. 200, 2017, 80 million. Not 80, oh my God. That is a huge dropout. And what that means that we are living in the digital days. Smart, digital world digital world smartphones itunes spotify youtube it's like it just goes beyond the illegal downloading it just <laughs> yep. it, it just means that people there are more ways to listen to music and mm-hmm. you know cd's sales are being effective best buy and target in particular are seeing this and that's why they, well, they still going to sell CDs online, but 
it ain't gonna be in stores. Um, nope. So you, from an artist's perspective, what is your thoughts on this? And do you do you think this is this could be the beginning of the end of CDs? Do you think they could end up getting the dino, oh. a dinosaurs treatment being extinct, if you will? <laughs> um, I, I think it is that time, truthfully, Kenny. Um, I hate to say it because um. As an artist, I have yet to even make physical copies of my first album yet, and that stuff, I can't do that. Well, I still could do it, but it's not in the biggest outlets you have. Come on, Best Buy, you know, I, I'm trying to get my CDs in there so I can go to the store and see my CD in there, you know? It's like a, it's like an achievement of mine, but now that they're about to stop selling CDs now, um, I think as an artist, it does impact us a lot. You know, that's another way we can get the money we can get. Um, it's really hard to get money as an artist, so if I'm canceling out one of the biggest outlets ever, it, it kind of um, down us a little bit. It's now, what else do we have to go to? But who we can't be really upset because we're moving towards the future. You know, it is a digital age, and everyone has an iPhone in their hand. More than half the world have an iPhone in their hand and can stream music right from their palm. And we do get paid all that. Once again, you know, having that physical copy does make a big difference. But we'll, we'll see how it goes, Kitty. You know, I'm definitely a little nervous about it, but um, got to gotta move towards the future, you know? Yeah, that's that's pretty much um, what it boils down to. And, you know, music is kind of like life. You know, you, you just got to adapt to it and um, yep. just go on with what's out there right now, put it out there digitally. And, um, you know, people will, will wanting to it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Spotify heavy all of a sudden. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I dislike, <laughs> the only thing I dislike it is the dads, but... Uh, it is what it is, but I still can hear the music. Uh, but I can understand from new artists of this generation, been working so hard, getting to this point, and wanting to put, yeah. out, and put out the CDs, and they can go to a store and, and see their CDs on the shelf. And now you got Target and Best Buy, Best Buy in particular, the big one of the biggest retailers in the world, saying yep we ain't we ain't doing we ain't playing the cd game no more um now you know and back then you know people at like cd prices are high like best buy they got some of the top cds in the first week come out at 999 uh, exactly so if you if you if you are complaining about the the cd story and you missed out on 999 from your favorite artists I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's I, I made the most out of it, and uh, hopefully a lot of people did. You know, but going for eight hundred million sales in the beginning of this millennium, and now to eighty. Yeah. A big change. That's a big huge, change. Big change. So, um, and so it's we'll, we'll see. Um, now I want to talk to you some, you know, hip hop and, and R and B generic stuff. Um, you know, hip hop kind of been up and down, you know, as far as people's listening to it or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. not much has really happened in hip hop yet. Not nothing big or whatever, but you know, I guess people just keep hoping that these veteran artists from the past that will come in and shine. Keep mm -hmm. keep hip hop alive, but then you you got some artists of this generation that's doing their thing. Um, I'm I'm a I'm a huge Kendrick Lamar fan. Like that's my dude. Um, yeah, he's dope. Not just because he's a fellow kin like myself, but uh, he he's a very talented artist. Then you got J Cole, and regardless of what people feel about Drake, I like him too. He's a Kentucky fan. Me too. So. You know, that's another reason to like him, I guess. But, uh, you know, with 2018, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to, what, I don't know what the future, <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm, I'm no Cleo, but, uh -huh. but, you know, we said we got some artists to rely on. And like, if you want to support these artists, if you want to keep these artists alive, um, you know, you, you support them, not just going exactly on, not just saying hey I, I like this guy like go buy this stuff and go buy his merch <laughs> go, go buy and and look if you 
it's, and I and I keep saying this. I've become a like an independent music advocate, a local music advocate. I support local music hard in my mm-hmm. in my area in Kentucky, uh, and I support indie music pretty much everywhere. I get random follows for musicians that I didn't even know existed all the time. It yep. happens, mm-hmm. especially well, and that's the best thing too. I guess for me, it must be the the hashtag Music Mondays because I like I like. <laughs> I always like to have my favorite songs of the week. And I just want to say for the record, these are my picks, not my co-host, because he's more into old school stuff. I, uh-huh. I'm i like, he's old school, I'm new school. So, yeah, I, I got, so we, we got the best of both worlds. And I'm active on Twitter. He's more than sports or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but for, for you, Jay, how do you feel? Well, maybe I've asked you this, you know, last time, but as far as hip hop and R and B, um, like, do, do do you have hope that maybe things would get better for hip hop? Maybe people would would leave the mumble rap to the side, or do, do you think it's just going to be an ongoing struggle as far as artists, you know, really getting themselves out there for the hip hop side? Yeah. I definitely feel you on that, Kenny. Um, I do as well think it's a, a big decline going on in the hip-hop R&B scene, especially in the R&B scene, with don't new artists that aren't on mumble raps or projecting another artist's art, you know what I mean? So, um, new school future. I, I feel like it is possible. We could do it. But also the OGs, you know, a lot of the OGs don't mess with the new school guys, but nope. they got to show them the way, you know what I mean? So you don't have to, like like their music or show them how to write their music but if they just don't go do what you like put them on i feel like that's where we're lacking right now it's not not a lot of ogs putting the little man's on no more because they don't like certain stuff they do but it's a new generation you know so many artists are so versatile and you can't keep no one in the box now you know you got to be unique you got to be out the box so um as far as bumble rap um it sucks but there are a lot of dope <laughs> rappers out there that's coming out like myself, you know. So we can, we can keep it like that. Man, I swear, if I go to one of these local shows and and I hear a a, a mumble rapper performing, I probably gonna have to turn the other way. Probably go to the yeah, me too. <laughs> or something. I mean, if that's the, the direction you want to go, go right ahead. But you know, but hit music, you gotta understand what the words that people are saying. And if you are here wanting, mumbling around and trying to act all, all cool or whatever, but we can't understand mm-hmm. the words that you are saying, I mean, how can I vibe with that? How can I take you seriously as an artist? You know, you you can curse up a storm for all I care as long as I understand what the heck you're saying. You know, give me something. <laughs> and I think I just lost Jay again. But uh but great chatting with the dude. Uh I think uh, I lost him. Yep, I lost him. Probably a good thing I didn't talk to 